Hey, shalom, everybody. <clears throat> so I want to want to do this little video on uh, this dream uh, video that everybody's talking about. Pastor Dana, why, well, I know our time is running so fast; it's, it's running now. But you have to share with us the latest dreams that God has given you. What has what else has God revealed to you in these dreams that you've been receiving and what do we do as the church? How do we re how do we respond to what you saw, and how do we prepare? Uh, I had a dream this past Friday night, and I shared it Sunday morning um, live at my church. Didn't want to do a Facebook uh, one again, but I, I had a dream that followed the same pattern of the, of the months, and I saw the calendar turn to September, and a hand reached up and grabbed the month of September and pulled it off the page. And, uh, and then it laid it down um, in front of an altar. And we have a secret place in our church that we built about seven, eight years ago. Uh, our altar has horns on it, just like the one mentioned in the Bible. We have uh, the four carnal doctrines that some of God are on pictures in there. And I saw the month of September laid down in front of the altar where I pray at every day. Sometimes I hold on those all those horns just because of, I, I need it for that day. But the, the September month was laid on the ground, and I was instructed to stand on the month of September and begin to pray for several things specifically. I was instructed to pray for the church to have a strong backbone, for corruption in the church to be exposed, and for a great harvest. And so I stand on the... Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one, let me, let me say this. Uh, dreaming dreams. Okay, many times in Scripture... We are. We see that that false teachers have dreaming dreams. Okay. Now, um, that isn't a good thing. Okay. Uh, dreaming dreams. In, for example, in this one uh, verse, I believe it's in Yahu, Jeremiah. Um, Yahuwah says that the. False teachers with their dreaming dreams will uh, lead the people astray, okay? And I'll just finish the verse. It says it'll lead people astray and even cause the people to forget the name of Yahuwah and replace the name of Yahuwah with the name of Baal, okay? So that is a, an extremely important verse. Um, we're talking about false teachers. So dreaming dreams... In that in that passage is, is speaking about uh, false teachings that are coming from human uh, imaginations okay so so divinations visions that they that they themselves get from their own imaginative insight okay a dream uh, okay Remember, we are not to lean on our own understanding. We are to uh, lean on the scriptures, the testimony. Now, okay, this 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 pastor here is um, is talking about. Uh, let me see if I remember exactly what he said. Uh, 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 oh yeah, he's praying for um, he's praying for the the church to have a strong backbone. Okay, let me let me see. Uh, well, we're not. We're, I was gonna look something up. <clears throat> we're not supposed to be any church, okay? We're not supposed to be some Greek Hellenistic uh, idea of a church, okay? Church. The word church comes from the word circus. And the word circus uh, also comes from uh, the word Circe, which is that um, that Greek, Greco-Roman uh, witch. Um, we're supposed to be the body of the Vechla, the, the bride, okay? We're supposed to be the body of the bride, okay? We're the bride. Let me say it again. So... He wants to pray that the, that the church has a strong backbone. Let me tell you something. The backbone, the foundation, the backbone of the body of the bride is the Torah, is the, 
is the scriptures, okay? That's the foundation. That's the rock. That's the solid ground. That's the solid foundation. That's the backbone is the Torah, okay? <laughs> you don't pray that the body has Torah. You teach the Torah so that the bride is strengthened in Torah, okay? Um, this gentleman, he, he, you can definitely pray for corruption to be exposed. Let me see what else. What else does he say? Calendar. I begin to pray for those things, and as I'm praying, I hear a voice that says, "You're not enough. We need more people praying. So ask for more help." So as I'm standing on the counter, I'm calling out, "I pastors, people, believers, whoever you are, we need to pray." For the church to have a strong backbone, for corruption to be exposed, and for a great harvest, and 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 suddenly the okay, the harvest belongs to Yahuwah. The harvest belongs to Him, um, and it's up to Him. It's up to Yahuwah to to reap the harvest. Okay, the 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 field, the field is is the world. Um, the, the 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 plants the wheat are the believers and the tares are the bad people the lawless and the reapers are the angels okay so Yahuwah Elohim he already knows what the harvest is going to be like he already knows what the harvest is going to be like so <laughs> you know Okay, let me let me continue. The the counter below me just begins to get larger exponentially, and it reminded me of the uh, I've been to Europe a couple of times, and they have plazas and and uh, court court area courtyard areas where they have like the large life. Okay, I'll, I'll bring up a point, a Torah point right now. Um, first of all, the Creator doesn't isn't a respecter of persons he isn't a respecter of the heathen nations he isn't a respecter of the abominable things of the heathens uh, the father the, the creator Yahuwah doesn't do things based on the the Roman calendar okay so already this gentleman's talking about September um, the creator doesn't go by the the pagan calendar the the heathen calendar he does things on his timing okay if you look up the Hebraic um, if you look up the Hebraic the Hebraic uh, implications and and uh, the things that happen in Yahuwah's timeline he does things on his calendar okay he does things on on Passovers and on Yom Teruah you know Feast of of shofars and uh, he does things on the the feast of weeks uh, he does things according to his calendar so um you know okay I'll, I'll see what else he says size chess pieces and the calendar where i'm standing on it was tuesday september 1st that i'm standing on and it just gets exponentially bigger and and finally i see the calendar it looks like the size of a football field but, but all of a sudden, I'm not the only one praying. Somebody else is standing on September 1st with me, and there's a couple more on on uh, September 2nd and the rest of the days. And there were people that were praying in tongues. Uh, there were oh. some that were praying out loud. There were some that were very quiet. Okay. That immediately shows this gentleman is dreaming dreams, okay? Yahuwah does not do things against his word, Okay. Tongues, let me, let me, if you don't know the, the history of the tongues thing, okay, Jean Calvin added a word that wasn't supposed to be in scriptures, okay, when, when uh, Shaul Paul is speaking about languages, uh, Jean Calvin in the Geneva Bible, he added the word unknown tongues, what's, what's funny is how convenient, how convenient did these terrible translators suddenly, you know, put in the word tongues? Okay, let me tell you, uh, it was it was it was known throughout the world that Corinth and the and the uh, priests and priestesses of Python, um, <laughs> Python of all of all things, um, would go into convulsions of ecstatic speaking. Okay, 
ecstatic speaking is a pagan thing. The priests of the Egyptians, uh, the Greco-Romans, lots of different uh, pagan, heathen, um, you know, um, godless, lawless, Torahless people uh, go into these convulsions and and uh, just wild abandon of of uh, gibberish, okay, of babble. They're babbling lunatics. Uh, and that is a pagan thing. It's called ecstatic, ecstatic speaking. Okay, so this gentleman saying that he's that he's dreaming of people praying in tongues. That's uh, already that's uh, unbiblical and and that's an error. Remember that Yahuwah Himself says in uh, Yeshayahu, uh, Isaiah. He says, "I give the working of error." Okay, Yahuwah causes the delusions in people when they're in error. He gives them more error, okay? If they're in error, he gives them over to the error, okay? As, as uh, remember, he is zealous. He is zealous that if you, if you don't uh, adhere to his teachings, he'll give you an even worse error for your, um, for your stupidity, okay? So the, the tongues thing... You know, when John Calvin added the word unknown in front of the word tongues in the verses, uh, John Calvin's name will be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life because the scriptures say that you should not add or take away, not even a dot nor a dash, from the scriptures. Okay? Nobody should add or take away from the scriptures. And those that do, their names will be blotted from the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? Okay? So, uh, that word unknown should not have been in the word, uh, the, the word languages, okay, uh, Im imagine learning the context of the verses. The Corinthians had that practice of ecstatic speaking, and Shaul, who is a, a Torah teacher, uh, you, you all might not know this, but Gamaliel, Gamaliel, he was secretly a student of Mashiach, of Yahusha the Messiah, Mashiach, um, and Paul Shaul was really well informed, okay, so uh, Shaul, Paul addressed that whole ecstatic speaking gibberish nonsense, saying that if you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you just blabber, who are you talking to, <laughs> you know? Uh, you're not you're not doing anything for anybody but yourself, and you know if you you supposedly think, well here's the thing another another thing you, you're supposed to pray sincerely. If you don't know what you're saying, okay, think of this: if you do not know what you're saying, and you need someone to divinate, you need someone to come and divinate, discern what you just said. Okay, that's divination. Okay, the, the Father knows what we're going to pray before we even pray it. And he himself even gives us the words to pray. Okay, so, you know, you, you Christians are, are all wrapped up in mysticism and, and unbiblical error. Um, you know, the Father, he prompts you to pray and he tells you what to pray. Okay. And scripture tells us <laughs> how to and what to pray. We're not supposed to pray and babble and then have somebody discern or divinate what they supposedly says. If you don't know what you're praying, you're <laughs> you're a lunatic. Okay? Flat out. You are supposed to know what you're saying with sincerity. Okay? I'm sure we're going to see it in, 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 a, in another book that's going to be revealed in these coming days. Uh, many of the books are, are coming to uh, being revealed in these end times. Um, let me tell you something. Even in the uh, the Mishnahs and the Talmuds and stuff like that, even in those, even in those, they say that prayers need to be sincere and they need to be coherent. If you are not coherent and you don't know what you're saying, how is that useful to anybody? Okay, the Father knows what you're going to pray, even before you pray it. So just jabbering, that's nonsense. Okay, 
So a dream that has leaven, the leaven of the jabbering, lunatic, uh, babbling nonsense, that, that already disqualifies the dream as, as not a biblical uh, Ruach-inspired dream because, you know, the Father doesn't doesn't uh, go for that kind of jabbering nonsense. Of the, It's pagan. There was some that were kneeling, some laying prostrate, every, every model of prayer that, that you can imagine. And, but then the cry went out again, we need more help, we need more people to pray. So we began to, to, as loud as we could, all of us, church, we need help, we need help, we need to come, you need to come, you need to pray. And so suddenly I realized that the outline of the calendar was now outlined. Of the What's more important than prayer is that the bride come back to obedience of the, the testimony, Okay. That's what's way more important. There a bunch of prayer, okay, a bunch of jabbering nonsense, and and for a bunch of people just to just be out loud publicly, you're, you're supposed to go and pray in secret. You know, nobody's supposed to know that you're out there. And if this guy's having a vision of some some people in this uh, charismatic Pentecostal nonsense group nonsense group delusion. the contours of the United States of America, including Alaska and, and Hawaii. But I'm seeing the outline of the, of the country, but the calendar of September is there. And I'm kind of being raised in the air as more and more people are jumping onto the calendar and, and people are praying. All of a sudden, there's no white space on, on the calendar, and people are feeling, look, they look like ants, people look like ants, but I see people standing all over the, the calendar on the country in the United States, and they're praying. They're praying for the church to have a strong backbone, for corruption to be exposed, and for a great harvest. And then I see a finger up here, and I see the word, that it writes, A, solemn, in front of September, and then assembly afterwards. So I'm looking at the word, A, solemn, September, assembly, which is a clear call to pray for that month. And the numbers of people just keep growing and growing and growing, and the contour of the U.S. is still there. And then suddenly, suddenly, I see... A, a fires. Fires are coming, starting around the edges of America. There's fires starting inside. And some of the fires are the fires of revival that are starting all over the country, but I also see fires of opposition and persecution. And then I see storm clouds all over the country, even while we're praying. There's rains, there's storms. And I can see in the heavens uh, this demonic warfare with the angels of God. And you can hear the, the sabers rattling, and you can hear the fights, you can hear the, the grunts and the groans of the battle. I mean, they were, it was a fight. And the people that were praying, uh, the, the fires of revival were coming, but the fires of opposition were also coming to the body of Christ. And I saw warfare. It was just, I saw the weariness of the saints. Um, believers were holding each other up and standing together without any division, without, and, and they were fighting together in prayer. And, and the battle would... Okay, so <laughs> why is division a bad thing? Is this an ecumenical, uh, is this an ecumenical thing? Uh, Messiah did not come to make peace, but to bring a sword. Uh, Messiah divides uh, mother, <laughs> mother against daughter, brother against brother, you know, father against son. Division is not bad. The Torah, the the, the guidelines and instructions, uh, they're the double-edged sword that is so sharp that even divides. Excuse me, that divides bone from the marrow. Okay. That's called a close cut, okay? If you can divide the bone from the marrow, okay? I'm not a, you know, biologist or a, you know, doctor or anything uh, of, of biology or medicine or anything like that. But I can imagine that, that bone is just dried up marrow, okay? And marrow is just uh, soft tissue bone. Okay, so it's, you know, the, the, the double-edged sword that is so sharp that it can literally just divide, you know, something that is itself from itself, okay? So, uh, is this an ecumenical dream of, uh, you know, we're not divided? We're supposed to be divided. You know, like a lot of brothers say, it's better to be divided in truth than united in lies was severe, it was intense, it was brutal. I mean, it was absolutely, there, there were people bleeding and wounded, bruised and exhausted from all the praying. And even, as I said, the heavens were alive as well with that. But when suddenly the heavens kind of opened and the storms kind of, kind of broke 
And my mind and my attention was turned to the end of the month of, of September where there was a whole lot of people still praying on that day. And the heavens opened. And I saw... Let me, let me, let me remind you guys of something. Uh, Kephas, Shimeon Kephas, Peter, he was called adversary because he wanted to stop the plan of Mashiach, okay? We cannot pray against what Yahuwah has already ordained. We can, we can pray till our face is blue, but we are not going to stop what Yahuwah has already ordained. These things must come to pass, okay? We're not going to pray against the plans of Yahuwah. We're not going to pray against what he already says is coming. M Mashiach already told us what is coming so that we're not surprised. So we're, yeah, so we're not surprised um, at what's to come, okay? Uh, so there's no, you, <laughs> Yahuwah is not going to honor the prayers that are going against his plan, okay? Let me tell you something else. Uh, I don't know this man personally. I don't know his, anything about him. Um, but let me tell you something that scripture says that if you turn your ear away, if you disobey even, even the most seemingly unimportant of the statutes, commands, right rulings, any of the guidelines, he says that even your prayers are an abomination. So let me tell you something. Many of the lukewarms uh, that are lawless, uh, you know, that are disobeying, even even as even one thing that you're disobeying makes your prayers useless. Okay. So we know we pastors we know that that many 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 that sit there in the in the, the congregations are lukewarms and, and false converts and, and lawless people. Okay? So uh, what are all these prayers for when they're useless? Because many are in such rampant disobedience that Yahuwah says, I don't want to hear your, your prayers are an abomination to my ears, says Yahuwah. So let's continue. Let's see what else he says. I saw the Lord and he was standing there with angels. And he said very clearly, Arise, my bride, arise, my bride, and prepare to pray. Arise, my bride, arise, my bride, and prepare for battle. And lastly, he said, Arise, my bride, arise, my bride, and prepare to see my face. For I'm coming soon, and my reward is with me. And then there was a sound like of a thousand shofars being blown all at once. And even in the dream, I could feel the wind of those shofars hitting, hitting my face. And I woke up. Now we're talking. A, just an overwhelming, peaceful presence about me. And I got up and I, I wrote these things down and I just kind of typed them out. And I believe the Lord was calling us to pray for the entire month of September. And, and, but to expect some of the most serious spiritual warfare that we've ever been called to do and, 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 and called to expect. I, I don't know what's going to follow that specific month. But I just, I feel in my heart the battles are going to be very, very serious. Because the, the Lord said, Arise, my bride. He only calls us his bride when he's ready to come get us. And I'm not date setting by any means. I'm We're always his bride. October 1st, Jesus comes. I'm not saying that. Jesus was just simply telling us that he's about to come. And we know that. We sense that. We, we realize that. And he said, Arise, my bride. Arise, my bride. And prepare to pray. In other words, he was saying, Whatever prayer life prepare we have right to now pray. is not going to be good enough for the battles and the things that are coming, that we have got to get it straight. We've got to get it settled. That I'm a devotion that some believers do every single morning, and they read they read one verse and read two paragraphs and say, okay, Lord, let this happen and go on. That's not going to cut it. I believe the Lord is showing me that we need to, get the, as a nation, we need to pray. We need to get on top of this, on board with this, and get the people in your church praying for every single day in the nation. And we should expect... The kind of prayer that the Ruach just reminded me of. Um, let me tell you the kind of prayer that would be biblical, okay, when it comes to the, the what this man is saying. We should be on our faces, and we should be on our faces crying for forgiveness, okay, because this nation has become that second beast 
this nation has become a, an abomination that causes desolation. This nation has become uh, part of the beast. The second beast is what this nation is. Uh, you know, I can remember being a kid. I've always known. I've always known that the United States is is gone in prophecy at some point. That it's probably obliterated. Um, so the kind of prayer that we should be doing, according to this this video, is is get on our faces and ask for forgiveness. Personally, each person should be uh, prostrate on the floor probably wearing sackcloth and, and wailing and asking for forgiveness of, of all the things. Remember, uh, when Messiah appears, when Mashiach appears, you don't want to be caught ashamed. You don't want to be caught with filthy wedding garment, okay? Um, and let me tell you something. The foolish, the foolish uh, Kedoshim, the foolish saints, okay, it's, it shouldn't be virgins. The foolish holy ones uh, that didn't keep the oil or the lamps. Uh, the oil and the lamp are the scriptures. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, uh, and thy word is a light unto my path, okay? So those that did not keep the scriptures, okay? By keeping scriptures, meaning uh, meaning those that didn't obey the scriptures, those are the foolish uh, saints, the foolish, you know, kedoshim or foolish uh, holy ones. Now, the wise that did keep the oil and the and the light, uh, those will be prepared. Okay, so how do you be, how do you prepare? You get on your knees, you pray, you ask. Uh, you confess any hidden sin, any sin, anything, anything. Even even ask for forgiveness for things you, you just don't even know you did, okay? But it is in that wailing and in that fear and in that, you know, remember the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. So in, in all that fear and all that supplication, you, you know, Yah will, will, you know, if, you're, if your robes are red, as crimson, he'll make them white as snow, because you're you're coming to him for teshuva, for repentance. I'm sorry, for for forgiveness, for mercy. Okay, if you don't acknowledge anything that you've done, he's not going to forgive you because you don't acknowledge. You don't even care. There's no remorse for what you've done. Okay, so um, if you don't if you don't acknowledge your wrongdoing, then you're a liar, and you don't you don't you know. Uh, Hebrews 10.26, there's a fiery expectation uh, awaiting for you. Um, so this video should show you people um, out there that you need to pray, not, not to pray against what's coming, but to pray for yourselves and come out of Rome, come out of Babylon, come out of nonsense, come out of bad theology, and come to become a Nazarene, uh, a one of, of Yasharel, okay? The scripture doesn't teach you that you need to go and become a Christian. The, the scriptures tell you that you need to come under the banner of Yahuwah. You need to come under the the banner of uh, become Yasharel. Yasharel means that Yah himself rules and sets the boundaries and sets the, the, the borders of the land and he is the most high, most authoritative good shepherd. That is what Yasharal really is supposed to mean in the Yahudith language, uh, the uncorrupted language. Okay, in the in the quote unquote Hebrew that is full of Aramean and full of Babylonian, Yisrael uh, has the name El at the end, which is the name of some Babylonian deity. Okay. Um, Yasharel is the, the, the kingdom that is governed and protected and ruled and whose boundaries are, are given by the Most High Himself, okay? Shem's inheritance, okay? That is what Yasharel is. So, so scripture teaches you to, to become a member of the commonwealth of Yasharel, not to become anything else. 
okay um that's what you're supposed to do now you're not supposed to go and become some um you know uh yahudim the the other kind that's over there in in that little uh little sliver of land over there you're supposed to come under the kingdom that Mashiach is going to come and rule, and he's going to come and rule Yasharal, um, and not anything else. So, uh, if you take anything from this man's video, I mean, many people are saying that something is coming, um, you know, that, that, that a great catastrophe is coming in, in the next couple of, uh, or this month, or whatever. You know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it's true that that these um, that these fires and these meteors and all these things happen. So, uh, anyways, um, there you go. There's the message from the Ruach Hakodesh right there. Uh, get on your face and ask for forgiveness. Shalom.